The earliest philosophers believed some silly things, like everything to be made of water, the earth to be a cylinder, and for humans to have been born out of fish. Sounds dumb, but it actually isn't. Around the 6th century BCE, Greeks along with Egypt and Babylon were dominated by polytheistic religions. These ancient gods were arguably primitive ways of explaining the world. Some gods represented natural forces like fertility, the sun, and water. Hardly surprising when these civilizations depended on these things to survive. In ancient Greece, the creation of the world was described by Homer as a series of boinkings by gods. People understood natural phenomena around them as being the result of anthropomorphic gods. The gods are pretty cool and all, but why not explain the world around us without the need of gods? Why not observe the world around us and make claims about those observations? A fancy philosophical word for explaining the world around us and the nature of reality is metaphysics. So Farley said, Everything is water. Which sounds odd, right? Well, actually, the world, the sky, and air is surrounded by water, especially Miletus. Without moisture, things do not grow. People believed everything to be made of hydrogen until the 19th century. Dumb. Ha! What are you talking about? I'm sorry, I have a dry sense of humor. The idea that there is a universal substance is known as arche. The arche explains existence, life, change, and motion, the concept of everlasting motion being a popular one in Greece at the time. Later on, people would posit that the world was made up of atoms instead. Water was a decent guess. Waves of the ocean and rain from the sky certainly suggested motion and change. Thales loved wisdom so much that he created a school. Thales, Anaximandar, and Anaximenes unite to form the Milesian school. Anaximander set up a sundial in Sparta, outwitted Thales and Facebook by stating that the Earth was not flat, but in fact a cylinder, and created a crude, proto-evolutionary explanation for the origin of mankind. Apparently we were all incubated inside fish. Anaximander continued the search for the Arche, but stated it's not an element, but rather an infinite, boundless substance, known as the Apiron. The Apiron causes opposites to be separate from one another. Air is cold, fire is hot, the Arche must be a neutral force which generates the hot, the cold, and everything else. Some historians of philosophy look at the Free Milesians and say that of the free, Anaximenes is a bit crap. But actually, no. Infinite boundless substance. Are you having a laugh, mate? I can't observe that, but I can observe air and how it changes from an unseeable gas to a liquid and then to solid. The metaphysical arche is in fact air. This is close to our scientific understanding of expansion and retraction, but not the same. For Anaximenes, air was the most natural form. All things proceed from one and are resolved into the same. The Milesians observed the world around them and created arguments to support their claims. Obviously they were wrong, but we can appreciate their curious nature and desire to justify themselves. Three minutes isn't enough time to appreciate these philosophers fully, so click here to find out more, or watch our animated video on René Descartes.